how long does it take to charge? That's pretty much the question that everybody asks us when they see us behind the wheel of our GMC Hummer EV. And my answer to them is pretty much always, it's complicated. As it turns out, there are a few and very different answers depending on where you are and what kind of charging station that you have available to you. And I know you probably have a ton of questions about those various different situations. So in this video, we're gonna cover four different common charging scenarios that you may encounter if you own a General Motors Altium powered electric vehicle, including the GMC Hummer EV and the future Silverado and Sierra EV. While charging a GM Altium pickup isn't as intuitive as filling up at a gas station, it's also really not as hard or complex as you might think or some people want to say. Today, we're gonna to go over the options, the equipment you'll use, show you how it works, and hopefully demystify the process. As always, please consult with a licensed electrician about your unique situation before ever charging an EV or installing an EV charging station in your home. This is the Altium charging unit that came with our Hummer EV. And if you buy a Hummer EV or a new Silverado or Sierra EV or any other of General Motors Altium powered vehicles, most likely you're gonna get a charging unit that looks an awful lot and functions an awful lot like this one. This is a dual voltage charger, which comes with two different pigtails that you can connect into the end of the charging unit. One is a four prong connector that is used to hook up to 220 volt power supplies. And the other is a normal 110 volt connector with three prongs that you can pretty much hook up into any outlet. But there's a catch. While an EV will draw around the same current as a toaster oven or a vacuum cleaner, about 1400 watts, that's pretty much small potatoes when it comes to the amount of electricity that's typically flowing around inside a vehicle like this Hummer. Therefore, a Hummer EV and the future Silverado and Sierra EV will only see around one mile of added range per hour when charging through a 120 volt outlet. It's also worth noting that a typical 120 volt circuit in a home has a capacity of around 15 amps. Charging an EV at 120 volts will use around 12 of those amps, leaving just enough room for a continuous operation, AKA you really shouldn't use anything else on that circuit. For newer homes, that's probably not an issue, but for older homes, well, charging an EV on a 120 volt outlet that is shared with other appliances may create a fire hazard or even trip a breaker. But if you don't plan on driving much or well, you find yourself in a place with no other option, it is really nice to have something like a 120 volt outlet that you can find anywhere to plug into and get something. So while we've determined that charging with 120 volts isn't really optimal. If you remember this four prong plug, it fixes nearly all of those issues. And installing it onto this same charging base increases our ability to charge an Altium powered vehicle by nearly five fold. Here next to me is a NEMA 14-50 outlet. And it allows you to use this, the four prong pigtail on your Altium charger. It will deliver up to 50 amps of power at 240 volts. And one of the benefits of these plugs is that they are typically wired on their own circuit, so you don't have to worry about overheating or sharing it with other appliances and causing a breaker to trip. It's also a benefit that a lot of new homes are actually coming with these types of outlets pre-installed in the garage and ready to go. Now, because this Altium charger will draw up to 30 amps here in 240 volts, that means a 50 amp circuit is sized perfectly for continuous use. 
And if you don't know what I mean when I say that, it just underscores the fact that you should always have an electrician come in and help you figure out your specific situation and make sure everything is installed right. Because if you don't, well, you could burn your house, your EV, or all sorts of things down, and we don't want that to happen. Not surprisingly, with more power comes faster charging. So now we're able to add nine miles of range per hour. Through a typical evening, that's potentially 100 miles of range. So if you drive less than that a day, then this option could really be for you. But if you need even more charging speed and power at home, then let me present you with this option. It's a hard wired 240 volt charger that puts out 11 and a half kilowatts of power. That's just insane. I mean, look at the thickness of this cable. It's bigger than my thumb and twice as large as the other charger included with the vehicle. And when you think about it, well, that's because it can charge a lot faster. So while the 120 volt charger will put out about 1400 watts and the plug-in 220 charger does 7.7 .7 kilowatts or 7,700 watts, this does 11,500 watts or 11 and a half kilowatts. Now that's about three times more energy than it takes to heat a hot water heater or about twice as much as a whole home air conditioner. And by far, this is the most energy intensive device that I have installed in my home. But I gotta tell you, it's worth it. And that's because a hardwired vehicle charger will deliver a charge eight times faster than a typical 120 volt option. Even better, it's 50% more power than that four-pronged plug-in option as well, which means that over the course of being charged for an hour, you will be able to add 16 miles of range, which I know, hear me out. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but on a normal day, I'll drive and use between anywhere uh, 25 to 35% of the battery in this Hummer, just in my normal routine, and I can refill that completely in just three or four hours using this hardwired 11 and a half kilowatt charger. And it really changes the game for owning an electric vehicle. Pretty much no matter how much you drive on a daily basis, overnight you can refill your vehicle and be ready to go the very next morning. While the previous charger we talked about came with our EV for free, a hardwire charger on the other hand typically costs around two to $3,000 to buy and install. However, it does give you more flexibility and more speed in charging your Ultium EV. But sometimes you need to do better, a lot better, way better than 16 extra miles of range for every hour you have this vehicle plugged in. Because sometimes you wanna go long distances and all on the same day. Well, you know what? There is an option for that, a much, much more powerful option. This is a DC fast charger at an Electrify America public charging station. While 120 volts can give you 1.4 kilowatts and 220 can give you either 7.7 .7 or 11.5 kilowatts, these units can deliver up to 350 kilowatts. That means charging from 20 to 80% is possible in only around 35 minutes. These public charging stations are typically found in locations where you can get food or go shopping, so it's typically not so bad to have to hang around in one area around these stations for too long. So if you're planning on a road trip or to travel long distances, DC fast chargers are the only way to pretty much make it possible. However, they can have a fee of up to 25 cents a kilowatt and higher. You typically pay at these stations via a credit card or a mobile app. And depending on where you live or where your long distance trip will take you, a little research and a monthly membership for a specific EV charging brand may save you a significant amount of money or kind of make it more affordable than charging at home. 
But the downside here is that you'll have to wait for charging to complete, and station reliability and capacity sometimes leaves a lot to be desired. All right, so there you have it. A comprehensive overview of the four most common charging situations that you're gonna find if you own or buy a General Motors Altium powered pickup, like the GMC Hummer EV or the Silverado or Sierra EV. If you see anything that we could have done better, if you have any comments or suggestions, please just leave a comment down below. And as technologies and vehicles change, we'll update this video or produce a whole new version in the future using your comments to help shape how this video will be done. But in the meantime, subscribe to this channel and visit gm-trucks.com for more information and follow along as we long-term test this GMC Hummer EV. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you again next time.